Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. Today we are doing a Q&A. So if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen during the week that I posted a Q&A box, asked you guys to send in questions that I was gonna do in today's video. Let's get on with it. So, the first question. Do you have any other hobbies besides the gym? Is that a dig? Like you think all I do is you think I'm just some big meathead that just goes to the gym. Maybe I'm not someone who likes to watch rom-coms in the evening and goes for strolls along the beach and meditates on my head on a roof, spreading my legs up in, into the air, into the moon, feeding off its energy. Did it ever strike you that I'm that person and I'm not just some meathead? <clears throat> Sorry, don't know what that was. Do I have any other hobbies besides the gym? I also take part in jiu-jitsu. I do some jiu-jitsu. I really like that. I started doing it. I've, I've taken up jiu-jitsu multiple times in the last, let's say, four years, but never been able to get too consistent with it. But last year, oh, it's actually just over my one-year anniversary. I started jiu-jitsu last January, and it is January 16th or 17th. I'm off. It's not. It's 19th. Just goes to show you where I am. And I've been doing jiu-jitsu consistently for a year now. So this is the longest time I've been doing it. And I actually, I even competed in three competitions last year, which was really cool. Scared the shit out of me, but very cool. So jiu-jitsu and I train, I work, I do a lot of content. I do a lot of this stuff. This takes up so much of my time. And I like watching movies. I love watching, I love watching movies. I love a good TV show. I love a good movie. I'm boring. I'm a very simple man. And I love food. I do love cooking. I have to say, I really like, really like cooking. Remember that video two weeks ago, that shepherd's pie? My God, beautiful. But although my girlfriend gets most of the credit for that, she's watching this now being like, oh, I cooked that. Well, it's my idea. Well, Dave. Have you any experience of German volume training? What are your thoughts on it? I have no experience with German volume training. I will share my thoughts on it. Um, I have no experience with it because it never appealed to me. So for those of you who don't know, German volume training is more like a method, an approach you take with your training where you perform 10 sets and 10 reps of a given exercise and you're taking short rest periods in between. So that style of training never appealed to me because I would find that extremely boring. Um, it's also the volume is crazy high and the rest periods are short. So I couldn't imagine I'd be able to lift very heavy, which again, that plays into, I would find that boring. But I have no experience with it. Is it useful? Of course it is. Any, any program, any method you choose to apply to your training. If you stick to it for long enough, you're gonna see progress with nearly anything you choose to do. If you stick to it long enough and apply a few basic principles like progressive overload, training close to failure, etc., cetera, etc., etc. With all that being said, let's do a pros and cons of German volume training. Pros, you need minimal equipment because let's say you're doing 10 by 10, you are only it's so simple that you can only choose two exercises maximum three you couldn't be doing more unless you have a lot of time on your hands and crazy energy reserves because four exercises would mean 40 sets so either you're not going to be training hard enough or um you're taking some serious performance enhan performance enhancing drugs that's allowing you to keep up a certain intensity with, within that training session to complete 40 hard sets in a session. Um, that's kind of getting into a con, so I need to pull it back. It's very simple. You'll only be doing maximum amount of three exercises. And the pro in that is if you train in a busy gym and you decide to grab a rack or grab a bench press, you can set up camp knowing that you're staying there and nobody's gonna take it, and you don't need to go over to something else, some other machine that's surrounded by teenagers that you know you're not gonna get a look in for another 20 to 30 minutes. So that is a plus. It's simple, and 
there's very few, you, you choose very few exercises. Another plus is volume, which is also going to be a con, but I'm going to talk about that. The plus with the volume is that we know volume is a key driver of hypertrophy, of muscle growth. So if you're doing 10 sets of something and 10 reps, you know that's almost like your insurance policy, like, yeah, I'm doing enough to grow muscle, which is true. Um, and in terms of pros, they're, they're the pros I can see with it personally. The cons, um, it's boring. I would find that boring. I would find doing 10 sets of something incredibly boring. I've never done that in my life. That's just me though. You might, you might like doing that. Um, another con is that, let's take it back to volume. So volume, we use it in the pro list, but in the con list, volume can also be used because there is a point of diminishing returns with, within a training session. Um, and there was a study, now this is just one study, so you take a study with a pinch of salt. There was a study done in 2017 that took two groups of people, gave one group 10 by 10, and gave the other group five by 10. And the results were that the group that did five by 10 seen a little bit more results than the group that were doing 10 by 10. So that tells you that the group that were doing 10 by 10, they were literally doing double the work for the same result. Um, and, yeah, and we know, we know that there is a point of diminishing returns uh, within a training session. So you might be after a certain amount of sets, let's say five sets, six sets in, that you're just going to be accumulating fatigue and the chances of injury increase as well. So that was, that's something to be aware of with German volume training. Um, and also you want your training, I, I think you want your training to be fun. I think if you're doing three exercises, 10 by 10, that, I said it already, it's, that's boring, but I think enjoying your sessions is something that's very important and often overlooked. Like we have a lot of things in our day that are fucking shit, depress us, um, that stress us out. Training should be fun. And are you really gonna look forward to your sessions if it's a 10 by 10 barbell squat, bench press, um, leg ascension, just an example. Are you really gonna look forward to that? I know I wouldn't. Um, another con with German volume training is that the rest periods are fairly short. So I think they're anywhere between, I think they're 60 seconds, maybe between 60 and 90. That is not a lot of rest time if you're doing, if you're performing a compound exercise and you're trying to lift very heavy, you wouldn't be able to lift very heavy. You'd be tired very quickly. German volume training, my thoughts, there they are. Personally, would I do it? No. Would I ever give it to one of my clients? No. Could it be useful for you? Yes, it could be useful for anybody. Like I said earlier, any program, any method you choose to do and you stick to it, it will work. My advice if you are trying German volume training, it's not, ver not a very sustainable way of training. So with that being said, cap it at a certain point in time. Maybe do it for a maximum of six weeks. Spent way too long on that question. That was a training question. Great question. Thanks for that. I like talking about training stuff. Ah, cotton mouth after it. But let's move on. <clears throat> if you're still here with us. Everybody stop watching two minutes into the video. Thanks for that question. It's your fault, not mine. Just kidding. Is pre-workout worth it or just grab a coffee from Niche? If I had a Niche cup of coffee, I would just sip it and then move on. And that would be my answer. Most pre-workout supplements on the market, I think are a waste of time and are just there to burn a hole in your wallet. However, I think again, it comes down to personal preference. Some people love feeling like they wanna itch their face off and feeling jacked up to the fucking moon. Um, personally, I don't like that. I stopped i never liked it even though I, I used to train that way when i was younger but yeah all i have before the gym now is for the most part is a cup of coffee and i try if if it's available to me i might have a quick carb source like a rice krispies bar or a rice cake fish and a rice cake 
Um, in my opinion, the best pre-workout you can have is, yes, a cup of coffee, because caffeine has been shown to increase gym performance. Water, because most people don't fucking drink water, but they're worried about a pre-workout supplement. Hydrate people. Salt, because in order to properly hydrate, you need to consume sodium. People don't eat enough salt, and it shows because they start getting cramps, muscle cramps when they're training. Salt is, your lack of salt is probably why. And what else? Stuff that increases blood flow, so like dark chocolate does that. Pomegranate juice does that. Beetroot powder or beetroot juice does that too. They increase the expansion, expansion of veins, therefore increase blood flow, therefore sick pump, dude. And L-carnitine is a supplement that you could take. The L-carnitine helps you use stored fat as energy. So you might see an increased boost in energy. You won't see it. It's not noticeable. I've taken L-carnitine. You don't really notice it. Although some of my clients have actually noticed it. So again, down to the individual. So, and a quick carb source. A quick carb source because carbs help fuel your session. So that's what I'm thinking about when I'm approaching a pre-workout. I'm thinking blood flow, salt, water, caffeine, maybe L-carnitine, and a quick carb source. A coffee from Niche though? Yep. That's the coffee I'm going for. Okay, we did that quicker that time. That was good. I always feel like Johnny Depp when I drink out of this. Savvy. Would you ever compete again? And this is in relation to competing in a bodybuilding show because I used to compete when I was younger. Part of me would almost like to do it again because one, I'm a lot bigger. I've been lifting for, I've been lifting. I haven't stopped lifting, so I'm bigger. Um, so I would look different. I'd have more muscle maturity and my muscles would be a lot more dense if I were to do it again. The second thing is I would like to do a better job of executing it. And in the sense that I think I would be able to get leaner because I'm more mature. And the third thing is I, I would like to, I would like to do, third thing is I'd like to do a better job of it as a person. I feel like I may have let myself down when I was doing it when I was younger and maybe like bigged it up too much and thought I was thought I was something that I'm not because I'm competing in this show. Like when who really gives a shit? Um, I think if I were to do it again, I would do do it better and just be maybe a better person to other people and not be a cunt. Do you have any guilty pleasures? Tea and biscuits. Double dunk those bitches. Oh, I saved the worst question for last. Where would you like to see yourself in five years? Business, fitness goals. I hate that question because I don't know. I, I'm not a very good person. I, I'm not very good at looking into the future and seeing where things go. I don't know what I'm doing this weekend. I know I'm going to do train and eat, and, but there's certain things I don't know what's happening. And you expect me to know what I'm doing in five years. And the person who asked this knows this too. Where would I like to see myself in five years? Alive, hopefully. Um, in terms of business and fitness goals. Fitness, let's start with that one. I'd like to be massive. My arms would be a bit, bit, bit bigger. Catch up with my chest. Business goals. Business goals. Well, I'm working on, I've been building and working on my online business with Keen Brennan, um, Blueprint Fitness. It's an online co clo cloak. It's an online coaching platform where we help anyone from around the world achieve their best results to date and we help people keep that result long term through our education and giving them the tools we've learned from our experience as coaches, lifters, physique competitors, giving it all to them um, so that they have the toolkit to keep their results if they choose to do so. I'm very passionate about health and fitness and I'm very passionate about helping other people and I would love to have an online platform I would love for, to grow that and keep serving as much people as I can um, because that makes me happy when I help someone else with their fitness goals. So I would love that. There are all the questions. That's the Q&A. If you're still watching, which I doubt you are because I was talking a lot, I stayed in the same spot and we know TikTok has ruined attention spans. 
So I'm probably talking to myself at this point. But anyways, good talk. Enjoy your weekend.